What's up everybody? Welcome back to Workshop 1776. I'm Jack. Tonight we're drinking Belching Beaver Peanut Butter Milk Stout. And we're making this. For those who don't know, this is a, a noodle board or stove top cover. Uh, it's, it's basically something that you can put on top of your stove when you're not using it. And it gives you a little bit extra counter space. Like uh, my wife and I have one, we, we store our cutting boards on it. Uh, like a pot holder, a couple other things that, uh, and then with using the handles, obviously you can just pick all that stuff up, move it off, and then use your use your stove like you would normally. Uh, but it just allows you to have a little bit more counter space when you're not using your stove top. All right, now I'm uh, just cutting everything to length. Uh, using a speed speed square here is great because uh, it allows you to have everything exactly the same length. Now I'm just doing the layout. These clamps from Rockler are amazing. It lets you uh, lets you put the pieces on top of the clamps themselves and then tighten the clamps. If you use a, a different kind of clamp, uh, you may not be able to have everything on an even surface. So when you start pushing them together, everything starts sliding around, it's a huge mess. These right here, I'm using uh, something called calls and it's basically just a, uh, a piece of wood that uh, has packing tape on it, just regular old packing tape. And that allows you, to, if you clamp that down to your surfaces across all the joints, it allows you to keep everything as, like more flat than it would. When you push that pressure in from the ends, things don't start to buckle up on you or do anything crazy. It ends up coming out much flatter. If it's not flat at all, you might have to redo it and uh, you just lost you know, however much money you spent on that wood because now it's permanently fused together. All right, here I'm just adding uh, adding a little bit of length to it. So it was a little short. Um, I originally thought it was going to be okay because of the dimensions of the stove top, but uh, after making it, I was like, we didn't have enough. Uh, we needed a little bit more depth on it, so I just I added a piece to the back, and um, it's about three quarters of an inch. So I'm using my router just to get a nice chamfer on the edges. And this would be a lot easier if I had a router table. Uh, I built one a while back, but I ended up needing the router without the table, so I took it apart and uh, I'm, now I'm wishing I hadn't. Okay, so yeah, these are just the runners. Um, I'm just gluing them in, um, and then brad nails from the bottom keep it plenty tight. There's a couple places where there was a little bit of a little bit of a gap that I was nervous about, so I ended up clamping it down and then putting a brad nail in, brad nail or two, and then leaving it uh, for a little while until the glue had dried. knocking down the high spots. So when you use, when you use like something like 220 grit on um, like a sharper edge from like a router, a router or a saw blade or something like that, that uh, left a really like fine point, um, it just makes it a lot smoother to the touch and it also gives it a more finished look. Like it looks a lot nicer once you break that edge off of it. Here's a, I'm using dark walnut stain. So the uh, the customer wanted uh, a whitewash with like dark features to it. So since I was using pine, it's a lighter wood. So what I did is I, I stained it with uh, dark walnut, let it sit overnight with like heavy stain. And then the next day I came back and whitewashed it. That way it has the appearance of having like a, a darker wood with the whitewash on top of it. Uh, so the whitewash here, this is super simple. I just use um, this Craft, Craft Smart acrylic paint from uh, I think Michaels is where I got it. And uh, I did a 50-50 water to uh, paint ratio. Um, and then you just paint it on, uh, let it sit for a minute maybe, uh, depending on how thick you want it. And then just use a dry rag and wipe it off.
All right, here I'm just, uh, I'm putting the handles on. Um, this is super simple. So basically all you do is you mark out where the handles are gonna be, where the holes are, and then you drill from the top down, because if you go from the bottom up, you can have blowout, which it, for these handles isn't a big deal because they have a big flange on the bottom um, that would cover all that up anyway, but uh, for other handles, uh, you'd have, you might not, you might see like tear out from it. Um, and then uh, from the bottom, you just countersink, uh, you just countersink it so the bolt gets sucked up underneath it, and then that way it won't catch on anything when they're if they're pulling it across or sliding it on their countertops or anything like that. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. That really helps out. Um, we got a really good response from our last video, so uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna try to do this once a week. If you guys have any ideas for beers you want me to try, uh, just write them down in the comments. Jesus. Uh, and then uh, I'll do my best to try them all out. I like trying new beers, so thought I could incorporate that into the channel. <laughs> Belching Beaver Brewery Milk. No, what am I talking about? Belching Beaver Brewery Peanut Butter Milk Stout. I like it.